Hey muchachos and muchachas, it's good to be back with you. And this is another in a series of videos about mathematics. Now today I want to talk about something a little conceptual. It's why integrals are so much harder to work with than derivatives. They are, and if you've taken a calculus class or maybe you're taking one now, you've noticed this. You've probably noticed that if your home, uh, professor or your teacher gives you a homework assignment and you get a, a sheet full of functions and you're asked to find their derivatives, eh, it's not too hard. Get, get yourself a nice cup of tea and in not too long you're done. However, if you get a sheet of functions and you're asked to find their integrals, uh, all right, this could be a lot harder. You may have some pretty heavy digging in front of you to get, get to the end of this. Well, it's certainly true. You're certainly not the first person to notice this. Let's talk a little bit about why. Now, the reasons are subtle, but important. And rather than get into a, a really uh, abstract conversation, let's just look at a function and see what happens when we try to take the integrals and the derivative of that function. First thing we need is a function, so let's just make one up here. Okay, now, this function doesn't have any inherent meaning. It's just a relationship between the independent variable x and the dependent variable f. It doesn't have any more inherent meaning than that unless this happens to also describe something we really care about, some relationship in the physical world or economics or something. When, it's, when it describes something in our lives that we care about, it has some meaning, but it doesn't have any inherent meaning other than it's just a logical relationship between f and x. So let's say we want to take a derivative of this. Well, this is a function, or a product of two functions, x squared times sine x. There's a rule for that. It's called the product rule. Okay, and somebody a long time ago, probably Newton or Leibniz, realized that if I have a function, I'll get my head out of your way here, if I have a function that's the product of two other functions, like this is, then f prime of x, and again, I will get my head out of your way. I'm not always very good about that. Okay, now remember, there's two ways to write the derivative. They mean the same thing. They're just different people help develop calculus, so there's a couple of different notations, but these are equivalent. That's going to be a prime of x bx plus a bx prime. If you want to write to say this out in words, it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. That's what this is. And that's the product rule. And this is true for all functions of this form. This is a general rule. And an awful lot of functions obey that or, or of this form. So let's just do that. Now let's see. f prime of x, which is also equal df dx. 2x, that's the, the derivative of x squared, times sine x. Uh oh, I'm going to run out of room here. Plus x squared, and the derivative of sine is cosine. There. Derivative of the first times the second, plus the derivative of the second times the first. That's the product rule. There are a few other rules governing derivatives. There's only a couple, really, that we ever use. I could write all of them down on one side of one little post-it note. Here's the problem. There aren't rules like this for integration, or not very many. There's a few. Let's try this. To make this to drive the point home, find the integral of f of x with respect to x. So find the integral of x squared times sine x dx. Go ahead, I'll watch. This is hard, isn't it? There aren't general rules for this. And the conceptual reason is this is an inverse problem. There's a class of mathematical problems called inverse problems. A forward problem See, if I, if I execute some, some set of, uh, of mathematical operations and I find an answer, that's a forward problem. An inverse problem is, there's the answer. What's the operation that gave me that answer? That's an inverse problem, and those are generally a lot harder. 
integration is an inverse problem. When I wanted to find the derivative, I just did this. Do it again here, just for reasons of good form. And you just crank this thing out. You just turn the crank, and out, out comes the answer. Now, sometimes the, the answer, the crank isn't super easy to turn, but you know what the process is. There's a process for this. Given this, find the derivative, and there's rules for the derivative. The, the problem with this is, there's the answer, find what, what this is. That's the answer, construct the question. Forward problem is, here's the question, there's the answer. Inverse problem is, there's the answer, right uh, there. Formulate the question. So the big reason is, in integrals are a, an inverse problem. Inverse problems are generally much harder to solve than forward problems. And the other part of this is there are relatively few general rules for finding integrals. When you find integrals analytically, you wind up with this list of things that might work. So you try integration by parts. You try substitution. You try integration by parts followed by substitution. You follow substitution by substitute. You go through this, this uh, uh, sea of possibilities hoping one of them works. When you're dealing with integration, you don't know if they're going to work until you try them. And that's the nature of an inverse problem. So how do we deal with this in practice? Well, for a lot of problems, some enterprising person, probably some grad student, has worked out integral tables. If you look in books, I have one. This is a book I got in college decades ago, and it is called A Handbook of Mathematical Tables and Formulas. Do you know what lives in here? I've got, I've got uh, markers in here. Guess what this is? Those are tables of integrals. People like me used to carry these books around, and this thing is worn. This one has had a hard life. It's been used. In the pre-internet days, we had to carry these tables around with us because there were not enough, and there still aren't, enough general rules to, for integration like there are for derivatives. So this is how we used to do it. I don't recommend it, but if it's this or nothing, this is better than nothing. Now we use the internet. Now we have symbolic processing, so we don't tend to carry those around anymore. So if you can't solve something symbolically, which is what we're doing here, your next best step is to solve numerically. And in big engineering codes, like some of the computer-aided engineering uh, packages, say SolidWorks or something like that, most of the time, integrals are carried out numerically. So they're actually doing sums or the equivalent of sums internal to the software. So there's the big idea, gang. Derivatives are a forward problem. Integrals are an inverse problem. Inverse problems are generally a lot harder. When you do integrals in practice, in your careers, if there isn't a clear symbolic uh, solution to an integral, almost always we revert to a numerical solution and just actually work out numbers. Hope this helps. We'll talk to you next time.